Well, that's bizarre. What's going on, guys? This is the bizarre briefing. All right. It's all right. You're making a face. Our, co our continuing adventures in like finding out how to start better. this. Last, oh, last I time, I, I, it's feeling a little month. bizarre in here. That's what it was. Because, I mean, you're like, <laughs> like, that's bizarre. You decided to turn on the video or listen to the audio. You decided to check out our podcast. Isn't that weird? Well, that's weird. Okay. We, what uh, we should be doing. Criticism if, received. If we're going okay, to go received. with the bizarre Heard. thing in terms of an intro, there should be a, a random crazy noise, like some kind of sound bite that intros the show every week and then we uh, just say that was bizarre and then we just move directly into the show da, 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 da. and never acknowledge it anymore oh like a sa like that's a what you could do oh interesting so I feel we'll like brant hates it though brant doesn't like it <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna edit in the sound of like a, a goat bleeding or something okay. i mean i think it's better it's better than without the sound but i'm still not 100 percent sold on the well that's bizarre okay I, I'm saying that's the only way we could get that away that would with work. It. That's the only way that would work. Correct. I agree. Okay. Welcome to the bizarre briefing. Uh, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. It was Monday the last. The 29th week. of, yes, of what, June. One month is it? Uh, June. June. It's June. Did this we record June in June, June last time too? Is this a double month? Nope. No, we're doing the no. end of the month. Yeah. So, it was so it's the, the last Monday of every month. Pretty much. I mean, that, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah. That oh. seems to be what we've settled into. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I, I'm Bryce Castillo. Oh, that was Brant Hughes. Hi. And of course, John Tilton. Yep. The three of us are the behind the scenes of Bizarre Magic. Yeah. And we, it should be worth noting that we stream live on TimeClub.tv. That's right. If you're uh, checking this out afterwards. Right. Uh, though we are not on Alpha Geek Radio. Though we are on DiamondClub.fm. Boom. Boom. Exclusive. Hashtag exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah. Is that what all the kids are calling it? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, so we have a huge doc this week. Like, yeah. this doc. Like, previously, we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, like, kind of just, hey, yeah. whatever what comes you? up, comes up. But I'm like, dog, dog. Dog. Like, <laughs> let's get this shit organized. Mm -hmm. And that is your your jam, right? Oh, my God. Making yes. docs, doing wiki stuff. Cleaning stuff. Putting things in categories, people. Yeah, this your your living in the Brushwood House has it exponentially made the studio nicer, just by how clean it is now. Sure. Yeah. Though I came in and kind of messed everything up a little bit. But. Hey, that's the, fine. The existence of the dock really does, uh, like, not to brag about us, but we do a lot of stuff every month that I'm not aware of until I look back on it in an <laughs> organized form. Yeah, we do usually, produce a lot of stuff and, and, and I, things. I would think you guys are kind of in the same track here where everything is kind of week by week in terms of, you know, like we have a lot of regular content that's out on a weekly basis, whether mm -hmm. it be a weekly product thing or sale thing or an episode or, uh, or like a mainline episode behind the scam, scam school remix. Mm -hmm. Right. And that tends to, you kind of get like, you're like, well, this is this week's thing, you know, and you go by the moment. But then when you like sit back and look at all of it, it's a lot. You're just kind of like, oh. We did good. <laughs> it's. I yeah. mean, it really is impressive for the three of for the three of us to do all of these things from these products, all of these videos. Like it, it's fantastic. Uh, I I feel proud of what we get done. Right. Yes, yeah, so I I didn't mean for that to be just like a let's start the show by patting ourselves on the back. <laughs> Frankly, I think we should do that every week. <laughs> yeah. And when we're yeah. not recording. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just constant patting. I do it on every morning. Back. I wake up. No, that. that's probably just coming backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we have a lot of topics here, uh, which is probably a better place to start than last month where we just ran okay. through everything, which took like an hour. Sure. So uh, what, what, what are these do you want to talk about first? Uh, so first, because I feel like a lot of these end up being uh, uh, a little bit more focused towards Bryce and myself since we have more similar jobs than John. Uh, I want to go... Excuse me. I want to go over uh, this unboxing video. This was pretty great. John, do you remember this? This is like right yeah. at the beginning of the month. Um, so somebody did an unboxing video for Scam Stuff. Wow. Oh. Um, with his kid, and it's awesome. That's it's great. so cool. Um, so let's maybe we can listen to a little bit of it. Sure. Because I know what I ordered. Uh, but I wanted to – I've been saving this for days just so I could do this unboxing video. 
don't play with knives. I never caught that before. That okay. he did not open the package. For days why, why don't we play do this? <laughs> Have we gotten like many unboxing yeah, videos? I think this stuff? is the only one I know of. So. Okay, and I would not have known about it except Brant brought it to my attention. Oh yeah, somebody uh, he uh, tweeted it to at Scam Stuff on Twitter, can you, can uh, you, and so it popped up on my radar speaking? there. So here, opening the envelope, I know he's we giving get away our oh, our secret surprises, things. but that's okay. <laughs> These are our stickers. So we try to throw in. Uh, uh, it's actually not we'll spoiler alert. It's not going to be stickers anymore right. uh, for. Uh, it Canada. will be stickers for a little bit longer. But we we started sneaking in some new fun surprises. So if you've placed an order and gotten free stickers before, your next order it's likely you might get something else. So. Hmm. Wow. Well, no no spoilers on that, but. These are like the mayhem stickers, right? The ones. Yeah, these are the mayhem free. stickers. Not the one I'm going to yeah. give you because that would be. And then uh, let's see if he pulls out the. the usually, you, when you do these videos, you would what else focus on the box, here? but <laughs> yeah, they they hold up the products when when they get it out. Um, you got the so, magic magazine. So here you got yeah. So because this was a uh, we were running that promotion where also, you got the free I'm magazine for every order over. I, at, oh, so I think fun. when he ordered it was forty dollars or more, and then later it was fifty dollars or more. Yeah, and so when I brought this up with John, uh, it it kind of called something to question that I had never fully considered before, which is like, especially for small operations like ours, getting something like this is super helpful for just like seeing like, okay, how did how did our package arrive? Yeah. Like, how how was everything laid out? How like what did they open first? In what order? Like, what did they think about how it was packaged? All of that stuff is like super helpful. Yeah, right? it, it it honestly really is because um, you know you think uh, you think of these as like showing and you know they're also for people who are thinking about making an order. But it is there are certain things that you know when when Brant first showed this to me, I was like, wait, let me see because for the magazines when they came, uh, we run out fulfill, of a fulfillment center, and so that adds another layer of wanting to make sure everything arrives okay. And you know when I was packaging everything up myself. You know, you know how it's going to be packaged together, but you don't know if, you know, every now and then they're getting someone lazy on the line and packaging it um, not the right way or whatever. But uh, it's it's just helpful to to verify that people are getting their stuff good. We we've had a a good um, experience with our current fulfillment guys, so so uh, I, I would have been surprised if something went wrong with that. But it's it's cool because again, I sorry to keep rambling on this, but. Uh, uh, kind of a nerdy thing about um, the fulfillment stuff is like you can select which SKUs like force into a box like so to keep those magazines in a nicer condition uh, we we had all of any order with a magazine ended up getting switched over to a box instead of an envelope oh, that's just good. to keep it better yeah because so, those magazines can be really delicate yeah and so that was something I was told you know it was all set in place and that's what would happen and you can kind of go by it tells you the dimensions of the package that went out and so you can kind of verify it that way mm. but you know to see someone with the box and know that like the video evidence of it is is uh helpful in terms of um sometimes it's hard you know being so involved with with scam stuff and but having your hands off of one you know big aspect of it so mm -hmm. stuff like that's always helpful yeah and it's yeah. just nice that someone like took the time to think to do that, right? It's and like also it makes it makes me feel like we're not just. Ma I mean, like I know we're just making it up, but it makes me feel like we're not. Like it makes me feel like this is an actual thing. Like there are real people out there who actually really do right. like this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the orders go to a real person. Not, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's not John. Just it's not like just some making bot, fake like, things. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, sometimes it, it like even because sometimes it does feel like that, and and uh, one of the things that makes it, any kind of interaction kind of prevents it from feeling like that. So especially when someone has a problem with an order, if they email us, it that that's why if if you ever do have a and this isn't just for scam stuff, but if you ever have any issue with any order, uh, it's it's best to just get right in touch with the people who sent it to you, because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff in in this sort of thing that can just go wrong and you don't know it. Um, until someone tells you about it, and a lot of times it's super easy to make things right and fix it, which you know we're always wanting to do. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fun. That's uh, that's that's really great. I, I hope I. It'd be nice if we got more 
of those. Yeah. Wink. <laughs> Wink. Wink. Uh, so next, next up. Yeah. I believe this happened over the past month, correct? Bryce has become yeah. officially credited as producer of Night Attack. That's right. Uh, and it's funny because we, the, I remember the first episode of the show, of this show, we said, none of us really touch Night Attack, so right. this is not the place to go for that. Uh, bad news has changed. No, um, the way to go back on your word, Bryce. <laughs> Uh, you so, retroactively became a liar. I thought we made a pact. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was going to have their hands in night attack. The attack pact. The attack pact. Uh, w- yeah. So basically, the the two the the things that I'm sort of responsible for on night attack is uh, trying to book people, book guests, okay, um, and uh, coordinate Brian and Justin so that they can record stuff record EP stuff, comedy EP stuff every four to six weeks Mm. and try to ease all of that stuff through so that like the, the files can get edited and sent out to patrons and then can eventually, like we set a date for the merit tapes. And I know we were talking the other day, Brant, and you were saying that you had your hands on the merit tapes months ago. Well, not even so much that, but more of just like, I, I like to think that I unofficially produced Night Attack for the duration of like four months yeah. um, at the beginning of the year where they have their secret show doc, which is basically just like, like you know, like here's here's our bit for this episode and yeah. here's, Blocking here's, stuff. here's the Skype info for this guest yeah. or whatever. Um, but they have a front page of that, which right now basically it's just like a link to the uh, the dock of broken promises yeah um but what i used to do is every week i would watch the episode i would Mm -hmm. see any time that they made a reference of at some point in the future we will do something or anything that would become a broken promise and Mm -hmm. make like a really big apparent text on the front page that says here's what you guys said you would do here's when you said you would do it here's when you said it (laughs) and just like i had as much information laid out as possible for them. Mm-hmm. And they stopped using the doc. And they mm-hmm. never looked at any of it. And so it would just build up and it would just build up. And it was yeah. something that was like, hey, you should really look at the doc because I'm doing stuff there and it would help you keep on track. And then, like, a lot of, you know, Merit Tapes was on there for a long time. And then, you know, like, a ton, the Euro show was on there for a long time. Right. Um, and I was trying to hold them accountable to something. And I'd even have, you know, right now there are frequent links on there, which is like the Patreon, the the subreddit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I would even go further to say, like, here's here's a current link. Here's the links for the the link docs, the show docs, the here's here's the up to date, you know, diamond time link. Here's the information that you need to know for those links from this week. Right. All of that stuff, which is kind of what I did last week on this Euro show uh, doc here. Uh, I don't know if we can pull that up. So we yeah. got doc links and the movie draft minute and yeah, all that good info stuff. on the guests and stuff. Oop, they don't need to see that. Edit that out. Uh, but yeah, it was just and then like and then when I when we started the show and I was like, I think I'm done with Night Attack. Like I just that's right. I went through and deleted all that stuff on the doc because I was oh, like, really? they're not going to use this, so yeah. why keep it here? Um, so yeah. I just bailed. Well, and it's funny because I sort of had a similar frustration. And also I wasn't getting paid. Yeah, that's also <laughs> a real tough thing. Uh, I had a similar frustration because I was doing similar to what you were saying. It's like I was compiling all these links and I would email it to them the day of the show. I'd even sure. reply to it so that it was at the top of their thing. Um, and it was uh, episode two weeks ago. I, I don't even remember what that was. Uh, oh, the one with Kanata on it, I think. Okay, I think uh, I watched some of that episode. I uh, oh wait, no, I I think that's the one I missed entirely. Anyway, oh, uh, and I uh, I felt I was feeling really frustrated at the end of the show. Like I was kind of like I was starting to get hot about it. Uh, I even like called Brian at the end of the show and I was like, I, I made all these links for you guys. I got all of this stuff ready for you. Am I not doing something right? Like, what's the deal? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was like, Yeah, I don't pull up my email on the media computer so people don't see all my personal emails, which is good hygiene, but is also a little frustrating. So so we settled on this doc that you made, 
as a really good place for Brian and Justin to go because it's not like the second screen, which is public, uh, and it's not the email, which is super personal. Right. Um, so it's this kind of middle thing that they can both see, and if I need to put stuff for them, they can go there and look at it. Mm -hmm. um, so a big thank you for making the foundation on that. Uh, it's really a great... Yeah, and I think I think I think Justin might have been the person who actually originally made it, uh, oh. and then got like some of like the episode by episode basis sort of stuff down, mm -hmm. and then I just did like broader strokes. Um, sure. But yeah, I think I think as long as they use it, it's a super useful tool. Yeah. Well, and so that's going to be me kicking their asses to use it. Yeah. I mean, which, which is probably something that I'm not super great at. Hmm. You know, like I could sure. go complain to somebody, but I'm I'm not. I'm not exactly the the person to to put the boot down, foot down, to put your foot down, F foot down. Yeah, and make sure that hold stuff their gets feet done. to the fire. Yeah, down. Yeah. So that's that night attack. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, I also see on here that you've got the cord killer segment that I'm doing. Yeah. So you you also you also produce cord killers, and right? You, I've been doing that for uh, about four for a hot four or minute. five min months now. Yeah. It's a little while. Sure. Um, and uh, so now I'm doing just a quick little couple minute segment every ep every week where I talk about uh, streaming sh shows that you can watch on streaming services. I'm trying to focus on like. Exclusives, you know, Netflix. Exclusive. Yeah, exclusives. Hashtag exclusives. Exclusives. <laughs> and uh, because one of the things we kept getting in the state of the court killers was like, I want you guys to recommend me more shows. I, I Part of what I go to watch the thing is, is like, find out about shows, but spoiler in time is for recurring series, so it's kind of tough for them to... to to the, the the response that they had was kind of like it's tough for them to carve out any sort of extra time for more content right uh, and I knew you know I'm in front of a camera and I am except except for the fact that I have cable I just don't ever use it I guess I am a cord cutter so you know Wait, you have cable but you don't use it yeah it's so funny I got Why cable you just cancel it I, I know do you pay for it I do pay for it what I know all right Shame on you. <laughs> well, I, and it's funny because I got the cable when I moved into my apartment because I knew hacking the system would be tough to get on demand. And so... Uh, was it like a free starter thing? Uh, I think there was a promo price. Because that's how they get you. Yeah. Mm. But, well, and I don't think that's clicked in yet because I don't think it's been six... Oh, maybe it has been. Well, I don't think the price has changed. You should anyway. check your bank statement. No, I, I'm on top of my bills. I <laughs> okay. don't use I don't use auto pay or anything. <laughs> Uh, so, so it's been, it's, you know, not too much f to ask for me to sit down and watch a couple of episodes of something that may or may not be good. Hmm. Like quick draw, which was not good. Comma, Brian. Boiled. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's on the lookout. Be on the lookout for it in Court Killers. Oh! Like, on today. Oh! Yeah. Uh, that was nice. So, so this is, this is something about you, Brant. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you've been wanting this for a long time, and they've been talking about it for a little while. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you do a lot of the stand-ups for Scam School, the uh, intros and outros. Yes. And that's a tough. It can be kind of tough to do that. You know, it, you know, we normally There's, use the shoulder mounts for the episodes, but that's not really great for walking. And right, we've got yeah. a little steady cam, but mm -hmm. it's you know, it's, it's it's like it's middle of the road, I guess, in in the grand scheme of things. But yeah. you got a nice little goodie. Yeah, about a month ago now. Has it been a month ago? Yeah, uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, we got the 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 whole vest rig. Um, yeah, for that it's pretty cool. Uh, it's something it's something we kind of talked about for a while. I think it was on our original. Um, it might have been on our original uh, gear lineup for when we first acquired Scam School, but it just didn't make sense to get at the time. Um, and so. Yeah, we we got that. We got it used. Um, oh, I didn't realize it was a used vest. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, so on the on the cheap, mm -hmm. um, relatively speaking, they're still pretty expensive. Uh, but it's cool. It's it's definitely it's definitely a different experience. Mm -hmm. Because you know when you when you use just the glide cam by itself, um, all of all of the stress goes into your forearm here. Right. 
Um, and so, you know, you get, you can do two episodes worth of stand-ups and then and be you, real sore. you start feeling it pretty quickly. Well, especially because it's hard to tell in this photo, but you're also carrying this huge audio backpack on yes. your back. Yeah. Which um, is its own, like, that's, I don't even, I, I, that's a really heavy bag. Like, yeah. surprisingly heavy, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's an, it's it definitely factors into things, um, because if you're just doing the the vest and the camera and stuff, hmm. like that's heavy because you know you're just at that point you're doubling the weight of what the glide cam and the camera were to begin with. Yeah. It's just distributed on different parts of your body, uh, mostly your shoulders, hmm. um, your shoulders and a little bit of your hips, and. Um, and then yeah, like the the audio bag just adds on to that. Um, so uh, with this rig, you know, you can you can go through a, a full, just about a full run, like four or five episodes, um, and your arms never get tired, which is great because you need your arms to to you know like focus aim. aim yeah. Well, focusing is kind of impossible on mm. this. Um, it was kind of impossible on the glide cam just by itself. Yeah. Because if you touch the lens, then it's immediately going to swivel and pan and move in all kinds of crazy directions. Um, so you definitely don't want to do that too much. But, uh, but yeah, you definitely need your hands and your arms to steer it uh, and to steady it and make it as smooth as possible. Um, but if you know, your arms start shaking because you have no energy left, then it's going to be really tough to get a good shot. Um, so at least with this, you know, at the end of the day, you'll feel it like your whole body will hurt. It's a very different ache than just, just using the, the arms. Can. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't breathe very well. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's, it looks very just like, yeah. It, I mean, it's just a solid slab of metal and <laughs> is the whole, is the vest metal? Uh, the vest no. is metal, but I mean, there's 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 padding on the inside, so okay. that way it's not like metal on man, metal on body. But uh, but yeah, and then so you end up sweating a ton, and then your whole body hurts. Um, well, and you got but your, it's really cool. You got your big uh, over the ear headphones on too. Hell yeah, that sort of just complete, dynamics. It just completes the illusion that <laughs> you are like a walking prosthetic camera uh, sure. operator. Yeah, I mean it. I mean, maybe I should put like some Hello Kitty stickers on there or something, and be like, "Hey, yeah. look, I've got have fun I've, with it. I've got a soul." Have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, I like this. Okay, so so the vest connects to this. There's, we're seeing like a metal protrusion. Yeah. And then it connects to the glide cam there, right? It's like, yeah. And there are actually two arms to that metal protrusion. Uh, one is right behind the one that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're kind of they're kind next of, to each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so one gets the glide cam away from you and then one gets it in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, but both of those have to be balanced and there's, there's some huge, like massive, crazy springs and coils in there and stuff that I actually had to take them out cause our setup is a little bit lighter than what, what you would typically for. want for that. Right. Um, because it like the heavier everything is, the more smooth and stable it is. Right. Uh, but I think we may do. It still probably needs some fine tuning to get it just right. Um, some of some of my early stuff. I mean, I've only had like one major session uh, with it as far as stand ups are concerned. So th there's still like a lot of practicing to get it down. Mm. Um, but it looks pretty good. We got one of our stand ups that hasn't the the episode hasn't released yet is like me running alongside Brian. And that looks pretty smooth, and it's kind of just like an impossible shot as far as, you know, uh, just a regular glide cam or handheld right. looks. Well, and that, that whole stand-up session was shot in 60 frames per second. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like that e was... it looks even nicer when you see Brian, like, running <laughs> in full, like, <laughs> in, you know, with full motion uh, speed. Yeah, there's a, there's a link in chat oh, for there? you. Oh, is there? Okay, thanks. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's almost mesmerizing. Oh my god! Oh my. Yeah, that was that was kind of my B on the uh, sixty frames per second. No, it's great. Look at that. He's he's like a movie. It's like a Hobbit. Looks like the Hobbit movie. <laughs> the Hobbit movie. Basically, basically we shot the Hobbit. <laughs> that's our. That's next week's ad. Yes. A three hour long. <laughs> Hobbit Why is it ad. about magic? Oh man, and I was just telling you the other day about at one point I had a Lord of the Rings idea, which I still have no idea what I was thinking, but it was Lord of the Rings themed, I guess. Oh. 
I just had it written down in my checklist of all of my ad ideas. And was yeah. Like, Lord of the Trinks, right? <laughs> the Trinks. Right? Oh. What the fuck is a trink? Like a trinket? No, drink. Oh, drink. Okay. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> Lord of the Trinks. That sounds like a slur. <laughs> it what, probably is. I, well, I... And that's what happened in my head is like he either said trinks or he said the other one, and uh, I wouldn't. I will. I wouldn't have expected you to have said it. That's why it would have I been a little trinks. out of out of brand for Brant. Yeah, that would have been off brand. Yeah. Please, I'm a Brant manager. <laughs> <laughs> Please. That's great. Well, let, I'm gonna extend the olive Brant. Uh, Aha! <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, right. So we've, we've got another topic here uh, uh, mm-hmm. about topics or about products that end up not ending up in uh, scam stuff. Uh, can you speak on that, John? I didn't I didn't add this to the doc, so I was curious if this was like a if people were saying mm. is it something can, that can you happens? speak on this brand? Because I don't think it really happens. I, <laughs> I, I remember I remember there was some impetus for me uh, putting this in the doc, but I don't remember exactly what it is now. Wait, but, was you know, it was it when I take the night attack shirts off the store? Is that is that what prompted it? Because I did that again. No, because stuff got really crazy. So I, it, like, um, uh, in a, another, um, yeah, I, I don't want to go too far into the tangent I thought of, but uh, so I won't. But the uh, night attack shirts are fulfilled from here and not from uh, the fulfillment center. Mm-hmm. And so every now and then when stuff gets really crazy, we had a really crazy June. I'll probably put the night attack shirts back up now, but, um, like it just made, it, it was just impossible to, it's just too many to, skews to just, handle. Well, no, it just takes you out of the, uh, because we have to fulfill it manually instead of automatically via the fulfillment center. And, mm-hmm. uh, we actually, so when we did the, uh, and I guess we'll talk about products we released since the last episode, yeah. But the uh, jackknife set, that was something where uh, the demand was a lot higher than we expected. And so um, uh, we we stated what it, – it's in stock now, so it'll ship right from the Fulfillment Center. But at the time – It said we, it's going to be a while before yeah, we get well, it. Well, and I gave it. a specific date, and um, – and there, you know, there were some complications getting the stock in, but then it did, and I wanted to make sure that since people were already waiting a little bit for it, that I shipped it out directly from here rather than shipping it to all the way them. to Webgistics because that adds another week of transit and then getting wow. into inventory. Mm-hmm. So, so I did all that manually, um, and uh, but what happens there is like when you have a lot of manual orders. Uh, whenever you have manual orders that are like a specific thing that you're not doing. So like the jackknives, it was like, okay, everyone is just like, you print out all the things and they're all going to get one jackknife set and it's going to be shipped and you just envelope them all on, put the labels on and it goes out and it still takes there's a long no, time. There's no extra details beyond yeah, that. Yeah, it takes a long time, but if someone orders, you know, uh, it, if part of the manual order is other stuff too, it, it just, it makes it so... Uh, there's more stuff running in my mind and then I'm more likely to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. So like when that stuff happens, I'll like take the, sh- like the shirts will go down because it, for some reason, when every, when something's busy like that, someone always just also like buys a shirt and it's like, oh. it's like, look, so then you have to go and <laughs> find that. So shirt I either have to size. not like wait until I wait until just let the order sit for a long time, which I don't like either. So yeah, it's kind of a mm-hmm. weird thing and we don't get enough orders of them that, that, uh, I feel bad about doing it, so I, I just do it so I don't overcommit what what we're trying to do, and so everyone can get their stuff yeah. quickly. But well, that's, that's but it was funny because Brent was always like, "Why does that happen?" <laughs> and, and I, I feel like I don't. Ex- every time I explain it, it feels like uh, every time I explain it, I'm always like, "Yeah, hey, I should just put it back up. It's not big, that big of a deal." Until it happens, and then it <laughs> like you never notice the way it affects it until like you have a day where someone ordered like there's a bunch of stuff kind of similar and you can't, you don't know what it all is until the day it happens. Mm. And then it's like when you make one exception and then followed by like 10 more exceptions for whatever reason, they all just happen to happen the same day. And then it's like, I shouldn't have made any of these exceptions because now (laughs) everything is suffering for it. But yeah, anyway, Uh, I I think I remember why I asked. Okay. Um, 
So another product that we recently released was the um, the candles, right? The uh, devil's candles. Uh, yes. Devil candles. Ah, okay. So we're only selling one flavor of that, correct? Yes. But we the, we got into just to kind of test out and see what we thought. Like yes, a demo. we got into. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. This is something that didn't make it onto the store. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this candle, the apple pie to it ends up smelling like farts. <laughs> it really, really does. Um. It's hard to tell in the video because it, it we didn't really get like got some good reaction. Watching the video like burn down to the bottom of it, but unless you like we ended up letting it sit in the bathroom for I, I don't know if it was like an hour or so and mm-hmm. then when you like it was ba- like it smelled like someone just had like a horrible bathroom experience <laughs> and it was like that's you a, open the door and it was just yeah. like was awful that's a but really polite not, term i love that a horrible yeah, bathroom experience but it's uh <laughs> it's it's hard to burning it fast and like kind of getting it all see, at get, once well seeing what we thought is like sensing the smell as it happened change mm. it makes for a better video it's it's much better paced and it, because you can't smell on the video and then um yet yeah you can't smell on the video <laughs> yet and uh but the downside is yeah you you don't really get the true effect of it it's a very hard to do that though on any video so I, right. I think I think we did the right presentation of it but um but anyway this is a, that was a whole different point <laughs> but um we did get two in the other one was supposed to go for from a forest pine smell to a skunk smell and uh, we let that sit in the bathroom as well and also burned quickly through it. But it, it just wasn't the same level as the apple pie to fart was. And Lower? So it was like... It was just not... It, it, it didn't... It wasn't as drastic of a change. Yeah. It, I see. It didn't really... It smelled kind of funky, but it didn't smell bad. And it felt like... It felt like if someone was going to choose between the two, we wouldn't want anyone to have experienced the one without experiencing the better one first. Mm. So we didn't want to give that choice of it being there, and so we ended up sending back the um, the other units and just focusing on the apple pie. So, so that's a case where, um, yeah, it it that's a case where. The product ended up on the store, but just not every skew of it that was right. available. They had other flavors too, but after talking with the guy who uh, who uh, makes those, um, it sounded like we just want to stick with the the apple pie ones. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah. So yeah. you you guys end up like after you do your research for like, oh, I think these products might work. I think these products might work. Usually you end up ordering one or two just to like try it out and make sure that yes, it works as advertised. Um, yes. So is it? Are you usually like really pretty spot on w- once you've decided to commit towards getting one in that like usually those almost always end up going up in the store or is it like every now and then you get something where it's like, eh, this is kind of. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you and now I'm really glad you brought this up because it, it's funny, like what we were talking about before when you get so like focused on like week per week what's happening and you're like, uh, especially when we have a release or a sale or something every weekend it's like you end up not, you just kind of like not remember any of the stuff mm-hmm. that you didn't put on the store and it's like we always put something on why would we not <laughs> uh, but yeah it, if, if it's a failure of a product or we just don't think it feels right we won't put it up um, but um, what was I so you asked about other products too so like yeah we'll get test products in that that look really good for the store and then you know before we order hundreds of them to put up uh, we'll test it out, and in one of them, uh, I don't want to say which one it is because I, I do think it's a good product still. But the the way it was packaged, the user experience just wasn't right. Like you opened it up, and it, the product kind of got all over you, and, yeah. and and we couldn't get it to work. I can't right imagine away. any product I would want to do yeah. that. Well, we couldn't get it to work right away, and mm-hmm. we did kind of get it working, and then we were like, oh, you know, I bet if we can try to keep getting this to work we could get it to work really well but at that point it was like well if someone buys this and it was a prepackaged like it wasn't something we were developing it was something that we would order from someone else that they developed right so and you it's feel, like you unless they the changed their pre- yeah unless they made the changes and did all this stuff which it, it didn't look like was gonna happen sure uh we we just decide well we'll let that one go um 
and so stuff like stuff like that happens every now and then. Um, uh, but on a, like, I would say more, we end up getting more like that. There's not a whole lot that get to the point where I order it a test unit and then it doesn't make it on. Like, mm. like it's fil- it's gone through a lot more filters when it gets to that point, and so it's usually just a like, well, let's make absolutely sure. Yeah, yeah sure. before okay. we do it. And so, yeah, the the one cent of the candle and that other product were two recent examples. But a lot of times it it'll, it'll get stopped before that. So, like if the pricing's just not right, like there was one there was one that I thought was going to be really great uh that Brian wanted to do for a while and I I found a good version of it and then when I went to get the pricing, um we would have to order a lot and like the, it, we would have made like no money off of it. And so it was like a huge risk, you know, right. it, it still might be something cool for the store at some point, but we're just not at a point where we can, we can make that commitment to something for that margin. Yeah. We, it, we would really have to be, you know, it's something we would have to be selling thousands of and not testing it out with 50 units or something like that. So, yeah. Um, fascinating. Before, I, before, I'm, I'm always interested in this, like, the scam stuff business talk. Cause yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting and fun. Yeah. Uh, cool. And on that note, uh, I have a, I have a thing that's not in the doc, uh, which I just thought of, uh, which kind of tacks on. What? To... How are we supposed to censor it and tell <gasps> you not to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this goes this goes back to you, John, uh, just real quickly. So we've been we've been more frequently tying in um like behind the scams with these weekly product releases and stuff and it sounds like that's doing really well for the shop right yeah you know it it really is um it's funny because we i guess for a while we were talking brian and i were talking about doing that kind of format and uh we ended up deciding earlier that We'll only show, we'll only cover it in behind the scam if it's a, like a very visual thing or if it's something we think a lot of people will be interested in. But at this point, um, uh, we found that whenever we covered something, the the number of people who really liked the video was high. Like people seemed, you know, there there was a time where we were really worried that if we covered too many products on behind the scam people will think it feels too salesy. But mm-hmm. whenever we did it, people responded really positively. And, you know, like, I don't think we pressure any, you know, we're not like forcing anyone to buy anything. And we Yet. we like to think a lot, <laughs> yeah, we like to think a lot of the products are kind of cool on their own, whether or not, regardless of if you own it or not, it's kind of cool to find out about it. Yeah. And so we ended up deciding, well, let's, let's just commit to it. And, have behind the scam always features some sort of product and usually it's kind of a like here on this rogues revenge video that oh i guess you're playing on the side but uh yeah on, on that one there's um that's a good shot yeah it's talking about the the new rogues revenge <laughs> but really it's proud of that. you know brian's also talking about his trip to france and time it's not it's all some, you know yeah uh, and, and you know yeah. sometimes it's only the the product and other times uh it's it's split like uh, uh the week before we did we finally got that um uh behind the scenes look at the rogues rings um yeah yeah we put that together that was fun yeah you did a really yeah. good job but uh, you shot Katie quite a there. while back right yeah we yeah. shot this in uh geez january or february right like yeah we had the idea to was, do that a while back and then we shot it and it just kind of sat there and it didn't yeah. really make sense until we started doing a product thing every uh Every week. Yeah. Every week. Well, and it helped that it this is the anniversary month of yeah. the Rogue's Ring. So yep. it all kind of worked out. Uh, and a lot of lot of really good footage uh, on that. We ended up cutting a, about a minute or two off of... No, not even a whole minute. Just a little bit more where we talked about some of the other products. Um, yeah, because they also etched the wallets and the flasks and stuff like that. But when, we it, became a, the when we became a, ra- a Rogue's Ring anniversary video, we wanted to... Really focus. Keep it on the... Yeah on the topic of the ring. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I think what we learned was, uh, one good example of, of, uh, what made us feel like we should definitely be covering it in a video every week was when we did the father's day recommendations, 
we had a lot of people who um, a lot of those products were never covered on on the channel at all and so we had a lot of people who just didn't know about it and um, I think we realized you know that's a it's a different audience because we we send things out to an email list you know if you opt into the the email stuff and um, that keeps uh, people up to date with new products but we realize that's that's a different audience than the uh than the channel than the channel subscribers so yeah. mm-hmm. um and that one we don't want to we don't want to well. not tell you about something cool yeah you're gonna learn about cool shit for real in your face True. uh so what's the next topic that we got here brand uh so i put this in i, I guess i put in basically well, all, I mean, you put all of them in so uh, but yeah uh, so this is something that I think I think I would be interested to hear all of your takes on. This is this is kind of an artifact of how Brian sometimes views things and how I sometimes view things and how maybe you guys sometimes view things. Sure. Um, this was brought up a bit in Night Attack like two months ago or something. Uh, infantilization, the term infantilization. Right. Uh, Brian, I'm not familiar with this, so you'll have to recap it. Okay. So Brian uh, has a viewpoint, and I think there are merits to this viewpoint, but I think there are also problems, especially when it comes to uh, organizations of this this small of a group, where Brian believes, you know, uh, if, if, if something is happening and you have somebody who you can get to do the work and who can probably do it better, get them to do the work like completely detach yourself from that don't don't have anything to do with that delegate delegate to sure. the 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 best equipped yeah person and so sometimes you know we'll be on we'll be on a, a scam school shoot and like we'll be like trying to figure something out and he'll be like i am assigning a task force and you are the head of it so yeah. you figure it out <laughs> right like like uh, uh Okay, so let's get a new location. Mm-hmm. See you in ten minutes, <laughs> or uh, 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 I don't know. Like, I need napkins for this trick. Full stop. Yeah, <laughs> little uh, things like that. And, and and sometimes it's like on night attack. You know, I I don't know if this is still a problem since I don't regularly watch night attack anymore. Sure. But uh, Brian would always say like, "All right, give me somebody the link. Somebody give me the link to the doc. Uh, where's the doc?" And nope, it's like, still happens. Brian, it's uh, bit.ly slash cap, all caps. And in, a link doc. In a link doc. The number. The number of the episode. Every week. It literally could not be easier. There's, <laughs> well, there's yeah. no easier way to possibly figure that stuff out. Well, and also, it'll show up in his recents. Like, if he, if he <laughs> right. used Google yeah. Drive, like, once it would, it, you'd see it, like, always shared with him. Yeah, and it's in the topic, and it's in that pop-up that happens on DiamondClub.tv now. Well, okay, so in defense of those, right. though, right, he uses a hex chat where you can't click on links in the topic. Okay. And but, I he mean, doesn't he could, go to DiamondClub.tv. He could see it in the topic. Yeah. And just go, oh, it. in a link doc, 50. Sure. Or whatever. Um, but, you know, stuff like that, and his reasoning is, you know, somebody can just send me a link in chat faster than I can figure it out. Right. That's his okay. that's yeah. his stated reasoning. I, no, yeah, that is what he right. said. And like in 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 my mind as somebody who who's who's you know uh technically directed night attack for a little bit, you know, like I I think oh, well obviously what you do is before you go live, you, you open up, up your up, your five tabs click, that you click, need. Click, 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 yep. yeah. And one of those is the link doc, right? And yeah. then you don't worry about it and then it's just there until you need it. Right? Well, and so I guess that's the goal of me Right, filling out this doc. Hopefully that that happens. But I think, but maybe what you're trying to get at is that that step doesn't even happen anymore hmm. uh, in the whole scheme of, of setting up. Yeah, and so it's just it's one of these things where I think it's interesting because sometimes it's sometimes it's smaller things like I, I need a link to this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's and also like there, there's this one time where um, where there was like. One of the annotations for the video wasn't filled out because um, I was like pulling an all nighter and forgot it or something. Yeah. And so he sent me an email. He was like, "Hey, so uh, like 
the the link is in the description, but it's not in the annotation. Can you just fix that up? And he sent it to me at like 10 in the morning, and he knows I'm not going to wake up till like 3 p.m. or something. Sure. So it's like, well, if you're already if you're already on the page, like just go throw that in real quick. It'll take like two minutes, and then you won't have to wait for six hours until I get to it. Right. And then I'm just going out of my way to go onto the page to fill it out, do that stuff. And I think, especially for stuff like that, Brian has gotten a bit better. I think it used to be a bigger problem months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's become a little bit more self-sustaining. Um, and it's this this thing where I, I think he, he views it as a, a, a fact of, of specializing in something. And if you specialize in something, you're the you best can person be, to do it. Yes. Uh, whereas I kind of view things as, as somebody who's always been the one guy who does everything because I have to do everything because there's nobody to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be proficient in all categories of all things. And so for me, it's like at the very least you should know how to do this. You should be able to do this if, if it makes the most sense for you to do it. And sometimes I feel like he asks upon other people when it might make the most sense for him to just go ahead and do something. Sure. And I was wondering if, if you guys have any experience with this or if you have any thoughts about this. Well, I guess maybe there's a balance, right? So, like, taking back to the annotation story that you you, you told, mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's a thing where, like, he knows how to do it and he knows it needs to be done, but it's low priority enough where he doesn't need to do it right then. Mm-hmm. So just whenever you can... Because, like, like, an annotation is, like, not a totally big deal, especially if it's not like the end of the show one. Um, but yeah, some of that stuff does happen where you kind of get the idea that you have to make it, you, you sort of have to work within how Brian wants to work. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that was the idea with all, with the emails, right. Is like he gets email he gets email on his phone. He he's gets not going to check on Slack. His computer. Yeah, no, he's definitely not going to check. Slack. Like, <laughs> that's a lost cause. Like, I'm yeah. surprised he activated his Slack account. Me honestly. too. I was like, that's a nice gesture. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that, but I know that does not mean anything. Right. We just have that lonely Schwood has entered the chat. Yeah. Uh, months ago now, I guess. Uh, so, it's 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 definitely trying to find a balance between like being frustrated at something simple or something that you've tried to make easy um, and reconciling that there's a limit to how much new stuff he will try to go out of his way to do. Mm. I don't know. What what about you, John? Because I feel like you probably have more... I don't have any comment. Okay. (laughs) Classic (laughs) John. (laughs) Cue Uh, the theme music. (laughs) Um, But although I do think you know, there are times where Brian kind of breaks out of that, where you can tell where if if maybe there's like a behind the scam that has to come out and mm-hmm. he knows that like maybe I'm on vacation or something like that. And maybe you're uh, busy like wrapping up a scam school and you just don't have time for it or something like that. Mm-hmm. He will make a mention of and, you know, like worst case scenario, maybe I'll just edit the episode. Right. And he, he knows that if it comes to that, the episode is going to like notably be more poorly edited than if either of us took it. Sure. Um, but he does make sure to note that that he wants is to an option worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, it's just every now and then it's like, come on, man. It's a little, come on. Just, sometimes you just want to poke him and just be like, come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Uh, yeah. You know, Mech asks a very important question in the chat and I think it might be a little appropriate. If the three of us were to arm wrestle, who would win? It's a good question. Because we're all kind of lanky. <laughs> I think all of our arms would break well, simultaneously. John's tall, but John's also kind of lanky. Yeah. He's felt. Uh, I don't know. Well, since John is tall, he would have the longer arm, which means he would probably win because he has more leverage. Right. Like a fulcrum uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That explains why I've ever won any arm wrestling then. <laughs> it's just the from a leverage perspective. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's like a door hinge. Right? You don't I'll open it. Take your word on it. You don't open a door. No, you don't open a door on the hinge. You open it at the knob because it's uh, okay. Yeah. It's great. I'm really glad yeah. I took us down this avenue. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's a good diversion. Uh, you got you got shit to talk <gasps> about Patreon, the Patreon model. Right. Right. True. Um. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's another heavy topic. Another brand rant. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, our segment now. Brand rant. Brand segment. Rant. Yep. Um. Okay. So here's. Here's something, and I've talked to Brian about this, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's kind of a tough spot. So right now we've got, what do we have? We have Scam School, which is supported by uh, Discovery ad. and ad revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Night Attack, which is Patreon supported. Yep, have, and occasionally ad supported. That's true. Um, and then we have Weird Things, which, which is all Patreon. All Patreon, and then Court Killers. Also, all Patreon. All Patreon. Um, so most of those hinge and on... And those are just Brian's. Then Justin right. has his own... And Justin has the Jury Show. He has mm-hmm. whatever, you know. FSL Tonight. Yes. Which is great. They've started up again. I haven't I haven't heard any from this season. Mm. I should listen to those. I'm going to tell Tom you haven't listened yet. I forgot to wish Tom a happy birthday. I, oh, we talked about this yesterday. Boo. I've been, I've been busy. Boo rant. I've been busy with moving stuff and not having a home. One minute, let's type a tweet. I, 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 I it doesn't take a social. I heard he's going to mention that on DTNS that you, uh, you didn't wish him happy birthday. <laughs> I saw that on their doc. Yeah, shout out to Hater to Hater gonna, Wag. I'm hater gonna, Wag. I'm going to call up Tom. <laughs> Do it. All right, give him and sing him happy birthday. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so most of those are Patreon supported mm-hmm. and I got a little bit of a problem first of all Patreon is amazing uh, for what it is it's incredible that you can you can have a show like this and you can you can split it up and have people say like hey I love this show so much I want to support you and your endeavors and all of that stuff right um, and the way they've got it split up, you know, every show, yeah, every show has its own Patreon. Every Patreon has its own breakdowns. Um, yeah, and I think that's cool, but but on some level, I feel like it kind of boxes certain things in, right? Because let's say Court Killers. Mm-hmm. So you have X amount of patrons who are donating X amount of money. And I feel like on some level, and they, I think they've talked about it this a little bit on the last like state, state. of court killers, uh-huh. uh, but it's really hard for shows like that to start experimenting because you have built up some kind of expectation for you are paying us this m- much money for this kind of product, right? And you know, some some patrons are definitely just like. I'm giving you this money just to do whatever you want to do. Right. But there, I think there are also some patrons who are like, I'm giving you this money because I really like this product and I want more of just I have an expectation of the thing that you're, you're delivering right. as is. Yeah. When And like some of the feedback, we've kind of gotten a little bit of the spectrum on that, right? Like you get a lot of people who are like, I've been a patron for this long because I really like the show that you do. So... I don't even know what tweaks I would want because I like the show as it is. Right. Um, you've gotten. Did, did they ask for tweaks? Or, I'm not familiar. Yeah. So we, we is did. Is that why it came up? We've done a couple of um, state of the court killers where we we Brian and Tom have talked about different directions the show could go in to to be better. Um, just like maybe we focus more on gear, maybe we focus more on content and shows. Uh, and we've actually done a couple of those this year, which is nice. I'm I, I like that they're doing it every couple of months it seems Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's definitely you you get people who are like because part of it is like we don't know what that show would look like if there are heavy tweaks you know Mm -hmm. like it's one thing to say we'll expand the gear up segment and we'll focus less on on this or that but like a full structural overhaul yeah to say oh oh, we're gonna we're gonna make a content thing and we're gonna do these piecemeal stuff like we don't even know what that would look like how that would work um and it's it, I, you're right. It's risky. It, it's hard to e- even with the Patreon model more so because if something is wrong, you you don't exactly have. You're at the trust of the of of the general public and not so much people who could see potential in like like advertisers who could see. Well, actually, this is a better product. I think it. I think it would kind of have some sort of natural 
like if if the show wasn't working and needed a restructure, mm-hmm. you would naturally see probably less people supporting the show in the first place. Or if there didn't need to be a restructure and they made a poor, you know, mm-hmm. restructure, the same thing would happen, right? Like people would back out from supporting mm. the show. I mean, at some point, like on a, it's tough because the Patreon model is kind of a small, uh, a small lake situation, right? Like Cord Killers and Night Attack have about two thousand subscribers or two thousand patrons, mm-hmm. uh, which represents about. I know for Night Attack, that's about a fifth of of uh, the total downloading base. Mm. Uh, but you know, when you when you have so few people. Um, you you can have anything from just like, you know, it's their credit card. Well, and the other thing with Patreon is that people can set monthly limits. So every month that number actually goes down. It will always go down. Like the number stays the same on the page, but people hit their budget. And so they just don't get processed at a certain time for extra pledges, you know. So it's it's hard to do that, uh, to, to see, to look at like the graph and say, Oh well, we did something different this month, and and that's been affected this way because, you know, it's only a handful of of the people who listen, uh, and it's it's oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's it's a handful of people who listen, and even then, that's not quite so many people to be to to think it's not just like oh their credit card got canceled and they forgot to re put it back in the system. Yeah, it's definitely a tough spot, and you know there have been those those off episodes of, of Court Killers where it's like Court Killing Special. Like I think that's kind of cool. Like it's just something different. Yeah, um, and that's and so that's one of the things of feedback that we got is that people want us to do a few more of those, like how to kill mm-hmm. the cord with a more updated video. So that will happen sometime. It's mm-hmm. not it's not happening today. Right, and then there are also times where you know. Uh, when they do an episode of Night Attack and they feel like, well, this just wasn't a fun episode. Like, this was rough. It was a total mess. Right. And they're like, uh, and they don't well, charge people. Yeah, don't charge people for this episode because mm-hmm. uh, they don't want to see any of this. And then it's just like a yeah. weird a weird hit. And then that That's weird to me that they do that in terms of like, uh, I don't know. Like, like, they've, had, like they've had some tough episodes. <laughs> they've had, I mean, well, I, they, there's so, probably, de- uh, there is good reason why they did that the two times that they've done it. Okay, so they it's not a regular... No, no, no. no. It's only ever... It, it was just like when it's a complete disaster right. and like feelings get hurt and... Yeah, one time I was see, like a big fight between Brian and Justin. The other time was like <laughs> they were both really off their game. Like I don't even think they read their ad that week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get that. Uh, the, the other thing I, I remember what I was going to say is that <sighs> Night Attack's Patreon has responded in step with... Uh, the EPs, right? People, more people mm. pledge around the time that the EPs are about to come out. Uh, so, in that regard, we haven't changed the show very much, but we're going to try to do more EPs because people are willing to, you know, put put some money up to do it. And is that making the is that making the show better? I don't know. Mm. Uh, if anything, that's it, one more thing for them to pimp on the show. Uh, and I know there are definitely people online who look at look at even humble Patreon plugs as like, oh, you're just looking for an e handout. Well, we I'm serious. There are some issue. people who are it's, just like, you are not. You, I'm not. Why would I give you money? This is the it, internet. Yeah. It's, Everything's uh, free on the internet. It uh, it's a weird thing because I, you know, you have a lot of that exposure to you know how many people are donating what blah 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 all that stuff mm-hmm. uh, like it's it's funny to hear when people complain about that versus you know when like for example you don't publicly show what's coming in for scam stuff that sort of thing sure. and I mean we all <laughs> people seem to only like when we are advertising the new products on behind the scam um, that doesn't make the products better just tells people about it um, and so I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a funky, it is a funky uh, thing. And I, I think it's cause it's newer and a lot of people aren't used to it, but, uh, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you don't, if you don't like it, no one's forcing you to 
be a Patreon and love it or leave it is what yeah, John Tilton if, says. If, if, if you, uh, if freedom you like isn't show, free, if you like the show, you can support it via Patreon. And if you like the show, you could not support it via Patreon. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting in trouble with the brand now. He gave me a, he gave me a look. <laughs> I've got thoughts. Okay, thoughts. go for it. Uh, so cue the brand rant. Yeah. So I, I I have I have a little bit of problems with with stifled inventiveness in in a lot of the stuff that we make. Like it just I I want things to change. I want things to move and be dynamic and and have different new stuff. Like that's the, one of the best things about cinematography is just like every week I say uh, this is dumb. Like let's just never do this again, and then we never will. And then mm-hmm. so we can just we can just change it super easily. Whoa. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think I think the the major problem is not necessarily that the way that the Patreon model works, but the fact that it, it lessens the incentivization of experimenting with new identities and new properties, like the bizarre briefing. We're literally just doing <laughs> this because one day I said it we might be it might somebody might get something out of this. Yeah. But really, if we stop next month, if we never do this again. We're not losing anything. Like nobody gets paid to do any of this. True. Like there's there's literally no incentive to this other than building the brand and just giving something to catalyze uh, the people who care enough about this company and the small group of people uh-huh. to have some kind of further connection with them. And so same deal with uh, a very important meeting. Like a very important meeting was a thing that I thought you know what, like we just need more stuff. We need more different stuff Mm -hmm. and we don't have it. And here's an easy way to get that done. But really there's no reason to do it outside of this sort of nebulous like fan service. And unfortunately with the Patreon model, like you can't fully justify doing something unless it's like, oh, and by the way, we have another Patreon. So that way you can give us more money so that way we can justify doing some of this stuff. And that's Mm -hmm. what I think like, so I... Bryce, you and I, we watch a lot of Giant Bomb, and yes. they, they have a really interesting deal where you know they have a, kind of a subscription feature paywall sort of deal. Right. So that way, you know, they say, "Hey, like if you love our stuff, give us five bucks a month or whatever, and you'll get all and, this extra things." Yeah, and like that's that's our playground to experiment with new, interesting features and and stuff that you would want to see if you if you really love the kind of things that we do. So it sort of incentivizes like. Uh, them coming up with dumb ideas like playing video games on a roller coaster and filming all of that. Um, and it's just Patreon is a really tough thing for that because it's like where, like, at what point do you say it's worth branching out and trying, like, totally new stuff and not just, like, a new segment on an old show? Well, I I mean... I can't speak for it like out of a in a vacuum, right? Like in the context of the sh- the podcasts that have Patreons, right? Those are shows that have in one way or another been a- been around for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Like Weird Things has been around for years and even toyed with user uh, donations. Cord Killers was frame rate for years, NSFW and BB Live show, and I think I think I think there are two. Th- things about that uh new stuff right Mm -hmm. it would be really great if with all of the all of the tech and all the studio stuff that we had that that the guys would do more things right like it would be really cool if there was like a mini night attack or like an extra day or something weird some weird new idea right? right uh but you've got justin who has like his his day job his literal day job uh, and then you've got Brian who like is always stuffed to the gills with like who ca- who couldn't find time to do like an extra hour for cord killers to watch a new like a user submitted show idea right mm-hmm. and so I think part of it is like there's a time commitment and they've doubled down on like making these podcasts a major source of their livelihood right uh, so to to for them to pull out new new content especially when they've got you know really busy personal lives i like i think that's definitely tough for them even if the patreons weren't around right like Mm -hmm. 
if I, I don't know, I, I think that would be tough for them to do. As far as experimenting, I think their shows, I mean, I'm not, I, I'd hate to do like a legacy argument, but the shows are, have been working this way for a while and like they know that this is a good show. So I, I, I like, I, I don't know why, what, I, I don't know what a, a radical structural change would look like for like Night Attack, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what that would be. Um, and, and I, and I'm I not, think. I'm also not necessarily arguing for that, right? Yeah, you're talking about the whole Patreon model in general. Right, yeah. And so I guess I'm kind of more responding to like the specific examples here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know like, we, you know, we're talking about, we are, it's been talked about uh, the, the puppy and like, I think it would be really cool to have a space that you could hit a button and go live to people and then find new things to do on the internet that are live. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a night attack or a cord killers, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but then some of that is just like, you know, part of it is I'm doing what I can from at home and location stuff. And uh, I, I think it would be really cool if like, like I think it's really awesome what you were doing with Cord Killer or uh, with cinematography and uh, uh, all the Cosmic Radio stuff, and I think we both want to do that. I, I just think I think inefficient uh, anyway. But you, you're right on some level where Patreon there's like a subtle shift to like sate the people who have already put money down instead of content. And I also feel like. Did that make sense? I feel like I just said four minutes of words. I, I think I got okay. I picked up what you're putting down. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I think I think on some level, uh, this this operation, barring I guess John's side, uh, is shifting a little bit more towards like this this uh, content, like video production sort of entity. Um, in some capacity, at mm-hmm. least. I mean, it, although Brian did make mention that he he wanted to focus on touring with the stage show more uh, again lately, uh, because like we need a memo system. This yeah. I'm, I keep learning <laughs> that's stuff. New yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, new to me. That's new to me. He mentioned that when we came off of that that most recent trip, and he was like, like he he felt that like he really missed that experience. Um, he didn't want to go like full time like he used to, but yeah. he wanted to incorporate that into his schedule a little bit more. And so to speak Ideally. to like the current environment, that's going to make it tough for him to be like, <laughs> right. yeah, let's just do a new day where I just fuck around or something. Um, but yeah, I think I think we have a little bit more of, of a production focus than we've ever had. And I think it's only going to shift a little bit more in that direction, at least for our branch of bizarre magic and i think on some level like the current podcast that we have as we have them it's just not enough like for me at least no i mean i definitely agree like you look at the schedule on diamondclub.tv and it's like it's real front heavy right sunday monday mm-hmm. tuesday uh happy days uh wednesday thursday friday saturday it's a show right i i think if something works out with the uh uh the specific puppy. studio space um i think i think you'll see a lot more of that kind of air experimentation yeah. and it may not that, yeah that brant's kind of talking about that are outside of the the current patreon shows but yeah. um and it may not be justin and brian i think part of it is like there people want more justin and brian and they are already so stretched then mm-hmm. we're like we are the next of kin to fill in that content hole you know right uh gross <laughs> but uh then you've got diamondclub.tv which is like a more open framework for people to plug in their twitch or you know get on the diamond club streaming stuff uh which is nice i mean it's a lot of let's players it's a lot of like twitch stuff mm-hmm. um but that's that is demonstrably what the people want uh mm-hmm just in on in, mass um so until there are more until the family grows just as far as bigger personalities doing their own bigger live stuff um th- there's going to be a little bit of a void that 
I think I, I think that we could definitely like Phil. That's a promise. Yes. <laughs> well, because yeah, you, you want to grow all that stuff slowly too. Like you don't want to overcommit to. You know that kind every of thing Thursday I'm going to do right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my schedule is like totally filled up as it is. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I would I would love for new interesting stuff. Mech mentions that Brian misses how much uh, he can abandon me at an airport. Which is uh, can we talk about that I a think, little bit? I you, think oh, before sure. we move on, though, I think overall what Brant is saying is uh, you can support us on Patreon, <laughs> right. and we will uh, never experiment with the show anymore after yeah. you yep. give us this. Is it Patreon.com/slash <laughs> the Bizarre Briefing? We're actually just going to keep the same topics <laughs> too. <laughs> we'll actually it's just be pretty good. In, Remember that unboxing we'll just post video? The same episode, <laughs> literally the same yeah. episode every month. But we'll dub we'll over the name it. of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really did like that you periscoped that trip to Baltimore. That was yeah. watching that was like kind of enlightening, like a little bit. Like because I've never, <laughs> I haven't yeah. had that experience. What? Mm-hmm. No, I was just, I was, I was about to agree. Like oh, okay. you've never done that before, right? So, yeah. Um, so it was. It's interesting to see, you know, what it's like to be with Brian at the airport. And we should have like, made you do that, Bryce, when that trip came up. We should yeah. just made you do it. <laughs> Even though Write you were a passage. Like, you would have been the worst person to do it because you don't know how to do anything there. <laughs> right. But And uh, both John and I are both so far out of practice that we're just like, uh, It's like it is barely like, different. Did you did you feel pretty uh could you get everything back in order or Yeah, was, uh, so I You're probably the most I, organized of everyone who's done it. Yes. So. Uh, well, in that's fact, right. you mentioned you had a manual. Yeah, that I made for myself when uh pretty early on. <laughs> And so that came super useful this time, where I was just like, oh, my goodness. Dividends, baby. Yeah, totally. Um, I'll actually try to get you a link to that. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Uh, And, like, so wait, hold on. So here's a question I had about that Periscope, because I Mm -hmm. feel like that it was just one thing that just didn't get covered. Were you, you and Brian got split up, or you guys didn't take the same plane out there? Uh, So we almost didn't take the same plane because we showed up a little later than usual yeah um mm-hmm. and they were way busier than they usually would be mm-hmm. um i think i think typically we do we would have gotten there a little bit earlier but uh but maybe maybe brian's memory was slightly a bit off or maybe they were just super super packed mm-hmm. um but we had like a 6 a.m flight and there were a ton of people there uh so we were trying to rush through lines and stuff and Brian got on the flight just barely, and then for me, they they basically closed everything off. But I, what had happened is uh, one of the kids on the plane was kind of freaking out, mm-hmm. uh, so they like held off the the flight for a bit, and then the kid had to get off or whatever. Oh wow! Uh, so like three of us were waiting, and then they're like, "Yeah, just go, 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 go!" Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, so you almost didn't make it. Yeah, but we did get on the same. I hadn't heard that yet. We did get That's on the funny. same flight. It was it was pretty insane. I was like I was going there with like all of my stuff from TSA like in my arms because yeah. I was like I don't have time to put on my shoes. So how did I mean you guys drove together? I imagine mm-hmm. you guys like got your boarding passes at the same time. It's like at some point in in the airport was it just you got split up at TSA or? Uh, so in the line, so Brian has TSA. Oh, he's got pre plus or, or check. whatever pre check. Yeah. Uh, so. He tried to get me into that line, but mm. they they stopped me because I I don't have the little check or whatever. Right, Plus uh, you look like a terrorist. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so Brian ran me over to like the second fastest line, and mm. then when we went up there, they were like, "Yo, you should be in pre." And then he was like, "Oh, okay." So he ran over to pre, and he just flew through. Uh, and then I got kind of the the shortcut through the big long line. But it still took me a bit of time to catch up. Yeah, uh, I, I we we've got your your stage setup manual here, but I don't know like if it's mm-hmm. okay to show. Is yeah, it okay to sure. show this stuff. So yeah, we've totally. got like your stage directions of just like you know things that need to come on on and off the stage. You know, remove the stool, get the block of wood, mop up spills and stuff, which is pretty cool. And then this is like an inventory. Yeah, so that's that's for Ooh. like setting up like where everything goes like these items need to be in this chair this chair needs to be here yeah that kind of stuff dude this is awesome like even like the stuff that you just do for yourself is like super well designed and i just thought like 
man, I'm never going to remember this. And then, and then, you know, you, you do like three or four shows and then it's all, it's all committed to memory. So when we actually started setting that up, I, I was periscoping, so I couldn't check Dropbox for all my layouts. And then, Mm. um, and, uh, and so a lot of it actually did come back to me uh just kind of spatial awareness yeah you know like oh this there's i remember this this goes to the left of this in one of these shares so i'm just going to put it here and then you like slowly fine tune it Mm -hmm. um but then i had to i had to check my notes for like two or three things you know Mm. uh but yeah that was that was that was fun although uh i was telling brian like once every two years that's maybe about (laughs) right for me Um. um but definitely no more than that because travel is the worst. I don't like it. Yeah, I really don't. Ooh. What if it was? What if it was like a show here in Austin? Like, what if we got some sort of studio space and it was like a once a month? Brian just does a stage show. Yeah, that'd be yeah. that'd be that'd be fine as long as we don't do Human Crazy Straw. I don't like doing Human Crazy Straw because it's messy. That is the uh, the the best thing. I don't know how much you did that, but it was like. Uh, you would have to find people who are supposed to help with the college show, mm-hmm. and like you always just, just tell, them, tell like, them to do human crazy straw for you. <laughs> I've got you one trick for it. you to handle. But you can just justify it because uh, you just say, "Hey, you're getting friends." I, re- I would always say, "I really need your help," and all of this is true. Mm-hmm. I would say, "I really need your help." Uh, there's this routine, and uh, you know all the stuff. Uh, explain all goes in the bucket. Uh, I have to. If I was to clean it myself, I would put the bucket down and I have to do a couple other acts first and then clean the bucket. If you can clean it, it'll be it won't the milk won't curdle, won't get mm-hmm. all messy, which is true. It's actually way easier to clean if you do it immediately. Yeah. Right. So then I would always find someone and then they would always be like, sure. And then uh the funny thing I would always feel bad about it at first until like people started telling me like, oh yeah, it was super easy. And I was like, great, because it's not when you do it at the end of the show. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, mm. it was always funny thinking about that. Uh, there was that, and there was always one other thing I always delegated out. Um, but yeah, I remember feeling bad and then not feeling bad at all. Yeah, it's, it's the best thing when you get like somebody to help you out for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, you're focused on so many things and you're like waiting for your next cue uh, and all that stuff. So your mind's always racing. And it's like, yeah, I so, sometimes you just have to like go run off and do something to like prep a thing or, or get get uh, oxy clean and some water for Brian. Mm. And you just have to trust that everything is going totally fine on stage and nothing went wrong and <laughs> he doesn't need you, um, which for is the a, most a case. Terrifying. Everything usually is going pretty smoothly yeah, for the most part yeah uh the, the worst case scenario kind of is like at, at this latest show like brian's uh, uh uh remote trigger kind of thing was wasn't working very well mm. so sometimes like his his music wouldn't change on cue oh did you have to change it uh he it? he ended up doing that but i have had a couple shows where i would run out on stage and press the button on his laptop to mm. change it or whatever mm. but uh <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, those are fun. So we got about time for maybe one or two quick topics. Okay. Uh, what, what, uh, dealer's choice. Uh, let's get down to um, the puppy. That fucking puppy. The puppy. Uh, so Brian has talked about it on the show, so I don't feel bad talking about mm-hmm. the, the puppy got parvo. Yeah. Uh, I, I, th- I think at this point... Any kind of possible puppy update is like fair game, like whatever. Brian, yeah. like there, there are no barriers apparently. Yeah, uh, I guess I, I guess that's the thing is like even if even if you or I or, or, or even if we were like, well, we know like a newer thing. Like Brian is probably gonna talk about it. <laughs> probably right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you if you don't know, we were looking at getting a studio space, uh, an old firehouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing if we could buy it off of this dude's land, uh, they offered like they were trying to get it for around two hundred thousand, which is comparable to other houses in the neighborhood, and it was less land. But the dude wasn't; it wasn't on the market. He wasn't really interested in selling it. He wanted to just lease it out. Dude came back, asked for like four hundred thousand dollars, which is yeah, crazy like for how small that. And he wanted us to, or he wanted Brian to pay. 
the uh, the the Some plot kind of, yeah. dividing fee. Fuck that noise. Not you're good. You're it, good. It's because it's because he doesn't really want to sell it. Right. Which is understandable. Because you can make more because, money leasing. Yeah. You can make a lot over more time money if that was his plan. That's what that's what he wants to do. So. Um. But. but so apparently the new well and then for a while the idea was okay we'll just buy some land and build a studio because if we're going to spend four hundred thousand dollars we can get something with ac on both floors Mm -hmm. and we could build it to how we need it yeah so there won't be big fucking columns in the middle of the, (laughs) the podcast stage right um and so i guess the latest development is a hybrid option between the two where uh, we may lease out the the puppy for a little while because construction and designing would take a long time. And we've got stuff that we want to do with the studio space. You know, Brian, like Brian, Brian's had a taste of it. He wants to get the fuck out of this house. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, so that that's definitely an option that is being considered. Unless something I, has changed in the last like twenty four hours, I mean, not, I believe it. Not that I know. Of. Okay, um, <laughs> but you know, like like the original puppy plan. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Uh, Brian doesn't. No. Uh, I, n- nobody knows. I do know that. Uh, I, I don't know the exact location, but Brian was saying that uh, if you we were going to build a place, he would want a third. He would want it to be three stories. Yeah. So that he could what? have roof, so that he could have an observation area, because so it's all rural, uh, like scenic around here. Yeah. So the first floor would be scam stuff. Second floor would be podcasting studio. Third, third floor, floor would be, would like be office a, and a place for him to sleep. So that way, if he's doing night attack, he can just go up there and go to sleep and yeah. probably shower or something. And then a roof for like peep in that scenery yeah but then it would be nice to have an outdoor set too yeah you would have an outdoor that's set. a good idea why not just go 10 stories if you're gonna do three now you're talking yeah. now you're talking tiny tower scam tower let's just build a vault a vault <laughs> yep go underground oh, with well, it okay. all okay yeah yeah fallout shelter yeah i for the update i'm no longer update i'm out of it i'm out of shelter they updated the game no no the update uh, on they should shelter it's, it's is, a little buggy uh, yeah nice. it's buggy as shit you hit 100 people uh, and it's like Whoa, it's buggy see i hit 100 people and then i got the uh I, the like last room you can build and then i was like well now there's like i can go to 200 people but there's nothing else I to do can't build anything else mm. so yeah i'm at about 80 i'm still gonna play it for a little while but i've, Just I've slowed down a lot on it it feels yeah. like you beat the game when you get to 100 right i can see that because then you're then you're just then you're just like mindlessly doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, uh, we have time for one last impression. Ha- you, you've been at the Brushwoods, at Casa Brushwood, for a m- over a month. A now. month and some change, maybe a month and a week. Yeah, because you had just moved in when we did the last episode of the Bizarre Briefing. So mm. one month later. Yeah. Now, granted, Brian and Brian has been out for like. Two, three, uh, it, five it, weeks. It will have it will have been two weeks uh, when by the time he gets back. Yeah, right. It'll be fifteen days and seven hours. I'm not counting, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but how how has it been? Because you're you're almost on your way out. Oh, I'm closer than ever. Closer than ever. New developments yeah. just hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> they decided to let you out of your lease. Yeah. So I now you can found that out three and a half hours ago. I called them up because I had late fees on a month's rent that wasn't due. Um, but you hadn't lived in the apartment that month? <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, I don't have to pay rent because I'm not living there. And then they were like, well, oh, you should pay you, rent and then we'll reimburse you. And then I was well, like, Well, uh, and, and technically that is the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, but also sure. they're not putting you up. Like they're supposed right. to put you up. Yeah. Uh, well, they had hotel reservations and stuff for some people, but I opted out of that because I knew that they would pay, they would reimburse my rent if I opted out. Oh, uh, okay. so I was like, well, well still, just you, give me the, give me the money. Yeah. You still um, kind of have to do a reimbursement thing. Yeah. And, but also like th- they have a, a comprehensive notification system, which was not operational this month. Oh. So usually they're like, Hey, by the way, you have some charges due, uh, this month, none of that. So I'm like, what's going on? Um, oh yeah, and have you have you been back to like check your mail or anything? 
Oh, no. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, uh, but I don't check my mail often anyway. It's probably just like some USAA stuff like, yo, check it out. You want another card? Probably not. But hey, guess what? We got insurance and you already have our insurance. So <laughs> we're just sending you this anyway. Sure. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, so I called today to talk about the late fees, which they are going to reimburse me for um, at, at the end of my lease. And um, and they were like, oh, by the way, do you, your first floor and you're not living in the hotel do you just want out of this lease and i was like uh i i asked that previously and you guys said no so i i will very strongly consider that mm. um and so i called i called him up uh, like 30 minutes later and i was like yes i would like out of my lease thank you uh, <laughs> so well, as soon as this is done i'm so silly <laughs> you're gonna go get all your, the rest of your stuff all my stuff which is already packed up in yeah. boxes because they had to put in storage units right uh to clean up the apartment uh and then find a place to live yeah and i've i've been i've been looking around yeah i got a couple, a couple good ideas a couple options um uh, you still are gonna need like furniture and a bed yeah. nope. and... uh i'm probably gonna as far as bed uh i'm probably gonna go like air mattress for a couple weeks okay right? just to, like, do you have one do you need one uh i don't have one do you want mine sure i think it's a it's like a double so it, like or it's it's like double height, so it's like it, All right. yeah 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 sure. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow, so I'll just drop. Okay, it cool. Deals. Pow, pow. Um, and so I'll probably I'll probably sleep on an air mattress for a couple of weeks just to see like how how my money flow is for a little while. Yeah. And then I'm probably gonna go buy uh one of those one of those dope ass like uh, the Lisa ones. Uh, yeah, like Lisa or Casper. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, which is insane because all of a sudden, like the past month, they've invaded like all of my podcasts and they're like, hey, we got mattresses. Do you need a place to sleep? And I'm like, yes, actually, I do. This is like the most opportune time you could oh, be sponsoring my podcast. Um, huh. Hold so on. I, you've, OK, you've given me a really good idea for something. So okay. maybe hold off on buying that bed. All right. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can. I will see what we can do. Sure. Uh, anyway, that's. That's the rough idea. Mm. Uh, I was looking at a place that's uh, above my pay grade, which I'm probably not going to go with. It's but, a nice place, oh, but... Oh, man. It's so nice. It has an island, John. It has an island in the that? kitchen. It has an island in the kitchen. Oh, my God. And Hardwood like, floors. Yeah. I, I think I think the actual model I would move into is would be I tiled. Sh- but I should send you a place, because Kelsey and my lease are almost up, and... Uh, Mm-hmm. I should send you a place off of. Um, you might have even already seen it. It's off of William Cannon that has. They have islands Ooh. in the kitchen. It's nice. Ooh. Hmm. It's uh, below your uh, your top range. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll get it in there soon because I'm 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 closing in on deals soon. That's the one you're closing in on. Uh, no, probably not. This is this, the, is, the this is the. Look at nice that island. One. Look at that island. Wait, is this a nice one? No. Oh, you know what? That's not. No, this is so. This is the one I'm probably actually gonna go with. This is the one that is that um, carpeting. That oh wait, so that is no, an th- island. This has this has wood floors. Um, oh, okay. This is the cheapest option, which is the one I'm probably gonna go with. Yeah. And this one is like a ten to fifteen minute drive away from Brian's house. How That's much does bad. that one cost? Um, I want to say nine eighty six a month or something like mm. that. What's the square footage on that? Do you know? Uh, I like want to say eight hundred. Mm, I hope. About seven hundred ish. Okay. Um, Man, that's like I'm thinking about like where I'm at now. I got like eight hundred square feet for like eight sixty five. Uh, the uh, West. But I'm also like an hour away. So that kind of yeah. Do the uh, the nice one I was looking at is is like uh uh like eight seventy five. Oh. Uh huh. Eight seventy five square feet. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up this this nice one. Um. But that was like twelve hundred dollars. Yes. This is the nice one. Yeah, so there's the island, and the the oh, hardwood oh. looks nicer in this one. You got a huge kitchen, all the shelving space. Yeah. yeah um, and then that was like, like like a scenic view sort of thing too, right? Yeah. So the the one I would get if I went with this would be third floor, uh, lots of big windows, uh, overlooking like the geographic features of. <laughs> Of all the hills and rock faces and stuff that's out in West Austin. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
you know, probably not going to happen, right? Probably not. Uh, it's got super tall ceilings. It's yeah. great. That, yeah, I saw the brochure there, 10-foot ceilings. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a real house. Just uh, kind of extravagant. Yeah. This is a really great video. It's great. And the audio people love this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm looking around. I, I really need to make a move on that, like, today or tomorrow. Yeah, because sometimes the places will want a week or so to, like, prep a room if they just got vacated, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the uh, the cheap option is nice because uh, I think I think the the room I'm looking at is already vacated. So they have me scheduled for a next Monday move in if I decide to go with it. Yeah, um, awesome. everything else is kind of end of July, which is when my original original lease ended. Yeah. Um, but yeah, around here it's been not too bad. I've been taking care of sneakers. Yeah, who's, who's kind of a handful. Uh, mm-hmm. Taking care of their fish, which is super easy. Taking care of their guinea pig, which is super easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking care of their frogs, which I haven't fed yet, but I only have to feed once a week. So that's going to happen on Tuesday. They got frogs? Yeah, downstairs. Oh. You walk past them every day. Apparently. Yeah. They're they're like this they're, big they're frogs. Oh, uh, are they yeah. by the fish? No, uh, they're they're by the downstairs office. Yeah. Yeah, aren't there fish there? Oh, those they're are like, the frogs. Yeah. Yeah. You probably thought they were fish. I thought they were like little beta fish. There you go. There you go. Frogs. Hashtag fish update. How do they work? All <laughs> animals are the same anyway. <laughs> Except for sneakers. <laughs> no, sneakers Except is its own smelly little thing. Uh, okay. Well, this has been another episode of the Bizarre Briefing. Uh, uh, Twitters. Everybody's Twitters. Yo, you can find me on Twitter at Gatowag, G-A-T-O-W-A-G. I'm at John, John Tilton, Twitter. but I uh, probably won't see anything. Still on hiatus. Yeah. Scams. Still on Although Star Wars Watch. You are now... Never mind. No. Oh. Hold on. I was going to say something, but in the interest of, of your of your, hi- your social network hiatus, I will refrain from saying what I was about to say. Okay. <laughs> you can tell I, me later. Yeah, I think it would be too dangerous for your, your directive. Oh, oh okay. I see. Okay. But yeah. Scam Stuff Store at Gmail if you want to get in. Right? Scam Stuff Store? If if you have some kind of scam stuff customer concern, you can yeah. contact oh, yeah. stuff store Sorry. at Gmail. Sorry, yes. scam stuff store at Gmail dot com. Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brycas B R Y C A S. Uh, the show. Uh, if you would like to get to this show, subscribe, tell people about it. You can use uh, the the uh, ll dash dd dot co slash tbb all lowercase. That'll take you to our. RSS feed and our little WordPress blog that we're running this through. Uh, if you want to send in any feedback, you can just tweet at us. We didn't get any f- questions this week, right? Nope. Uh, if you got questions or feedback, send it our way. Uh, I think we're on iTunes now, so we are. We are. We I are. checked that. Yeah. Or I. I, I we are. We are. We are. Okay. Uh, we're not on Stitcher yet. I meant to put us on Stitcher. Uh, leave us a review. God damn it. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. Like, why are you playing this? Yeah, we're giving you, like, we're not even asking for your Patreon. Yeah, we already talked about that. Like, we do this for whatever. We're doing it for that five star. Mm. You know? Five star, five star. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, So, for uh, June, for everybody at Bizarre Magic, uh, the, the guys behind the cameras are now in front of the microphones. That was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I had to because he made the sound. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>